Welcome to Lifestyles Plus, the magazine of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, EWM Realty. I'm your host, Olga Villaverde, and joining me today to talk about wellness, travel, and luxury trends in South Florida and around the world is editor-in-chief of the ultra-high luxury magazine, Lifestyles South Florida, Aneta Novoselska. Welcome back. Thank you so much. We so have happy. so much to talk about. Yes. I mean, look at these pictures behind me. Gorgeous. I can't, I can't. Yes. Stunning. Gorgeous. Okay, so let's talk about everything you've written about in the magazine this mm -hmm. time, and we're going to start with Italia. Yes. Love Italy. You went to two fabulous places uh, regarding a wellness feature that you mm -hmm. wrote about. Let's start first outside of Rome. Sure. All roads lead to Rome. Absolutely. So um, Palazzo Fuji is the name of the resort that I went to. And actually, this sort of relates to the theme of the issue, which is wellness. So everything that makes us feel and look better. This particular resort sort of focuses really on your medical wellness. And I was there for 10 days oh and have been through every test, through every measure of health and uh, being good in my skin and it really was tremendous and actually if we're looking for endorsements there I would say that um, actually Oprah Winfrey was just there really? so but we were there first so I'm very excited about that the place is spectacular and it really does put you in shape love it now let's go a little bit north mm -hmm. of Venice mm -hmm. there's another one there yes there was another uh, spa that I went to and it's called the Frey spa and resort this was more about the treatments and kind of the body uh, services and all of that you know you really have a tough job <laughs> but somebody has to do it so. I know <laughs> yeah but it was, it was amazing beautiful place in the um, in the world gorgeous architecture and really you leave feeling really really well oh, so worth yeah. going right absolutely and especially if you went and then Oprah I'm in I know absolutely. okay so you also talk about sexy investments in the column making a mark yes. what are these sexy investments I know one of them has to do with a scotch on the rocks <laughs> yes it does actually um, David Zivan filed this uh, story for us and we were looking for investments outside of the usual so we went with stamps which is having a huge moment in terms of collecting and investing your money in and cars being another one now the movement is towards Porsches that are actually no longer just vintage there are any Porsches that are being released before 2016 <sighs> and finally which is kind of cool people are collecting whiskeys it's a lot more interesting it lasts longer so it's maybe more economically savvy you know there's something to be said with that you know Super nice sexy. little gold and the little yes. noise it makes yeah. and just it's just and sexy absolutely and women are really getting into it it's no longer just um, men's kind of a hobby uh, ladies are starting to develop the palette and really celebrate it love it that's my dad's favorite drink by the way oh, nice. okay a hotel in Vienna apparently mm -hmm. it's just amazing yes. it's a beautiful boutique hotel yes. what's um, it called and yes, tell me more the Ameris in Vienna which is a beautiful city to start with with. Uh, this is a brand new property flagged by uh, Raleigh Chateau. It's right in the middle of the town. All of the cultural happenings happening there really benefit from having a hotel as beautiful as that one. The suite to stay in is called the Opera Suite and it is absolutely gorgeous. One of the most memorable hotels I've stayed in. And I know you kind of talked about location, but I know it's in between certain areas. Yes. I can't even pronounce the name, so I'm yeah. going to let you some concert heart. Yes. Tell me, but it's just very unique where you look and you say, wow. Yes, absolutely. So it's in the middle of and kind of a very important juncture in the town and in front of the opera house. So Vienna is very well known for opera season. People stay at the hotel and then they walk across the street wearing gorgeous uh, gowns and uh, it's just beautifully located. How stunning. Yeah, All right, really so we've talked about Rome, we've talked about Venice, we've talked about Vienna. Let's now bring it back to Miami and there's this new trend going on, specifically in Miami. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot about it. Uh, table side presentations in many restaurants. Sure. What is that and why Why is it so popular? Right, so it's kind of like dinner and a show, if you will. It's very immersive, very interactive way of being at a restaurant. It's no longer just guacamole on the side of your uh, dish or your table. Most of restaurants are really kind of embracing a way to to present their food in a very dynamic and different way. Jen Karetnik wrote this piece and we take you through the Claw restaurants, Bagatelle, all the other places in Miami to really explain to you how you can really m make your presentation a little bit more interesting and all these restaurants are really serving amazing food uh, in this way. And one of the standouts is that um, once a month, St. Regis in uh, Bell Harbor has a class on how to saber off your champagne bottle. Oh. And um, if you're willing, you can do this uh, by yourself for your own table side presentation. I got to tell you, I, you're the envy of everyone <laughs> to be able to go to all these places, experience and write about it. I mean, it's really life changing for you, too, right? It is. I mean, I'm very, very lucky. But, you know, we've all worked to be here and um, 
I'm very happy to continue finding these fun things for you guys. And you make such a beautiful story within a gorgeous magazine. I want you to stay right there because I know you went to France and the experience there was unbelievable as well. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, all right, so stay right there because coming up, she visited France to visit a special winemaker. So more to come. We're going to hear about it when we come back. Stay right there. Welcome back, everyone, to Lifestyles Plus. Still with me is Editor-in-Chief of Lifestyle South Florida, Aneta Novoselska. All right, so let's get right to it. You went to France. You went to a beautiful vineyard of Gerard Bertrand. Yes. Tell me about it. Yes. Sir. Paradise. Absolutely beautiful. Heaven. Gorgeous. And this was to celebrate the cover um, that we have for this issue. He's a big part of it, and we got a chance to see where all of it is made. You had a one-on-one -on -one with him. Was it yes. spectacular? Beautiful. Very, right. very interesting. I want to show our viewers, so let's take a quick look. Yep. Gerard, thank you very much for having me here at this beautiful Chateau Hospitalet. Could you please tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, we are in uh, nearby the city of Narbonne, and we are also just close to the Mediterranean. And uh, this is really an amusing uh, vineyard with uh, 2,000 acres of nature, 300 acres of, uh, of vines, and we are in the terroir of La Clap. How would you say the area influences the type of wine you are known for? You know, everything starts with the terroir, as well as we have the influence of the wind from the, uh, from the sea. And the, the climate is very important. And we just want to reveal the origin of Narbonne. And Narbonne has more than 2,000 years of history. You were asked to partner up with um, John Bon Jovi and his son, Jesse, yeah. who are the cover stars along with you of our new issue of the magazine. Tell us a little bit about working with them and what was your goal? My, my assistant told me 10 years ago, you know, you have John Bon Jovi on the phone. And I started to talk with John, and John told me that he wanted to make a rosé. And my first answer was, I don't want to make any celebrity wines. But John told me, no, 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 this is not a celebrity wine that I want to make. I want to see also my son Jesse involved in this project. I really have a passion for rosé. I said, John, if you want to make it, I just want to see you come in the south of France just to visit my places to start to work on this project. And they came all together and they spent a week in the south of France. And we have visited many different vineyards, tasting grapes, tasting wines. And we have started to make the first blend all together. We worked for more than five hours to try to, f to make the link between uh, the south of France and the Hampton lifestyle, you know, as well as uh, to reveal, you know, uh, a premium rosé to the consumers. First of all, you know, the concept is unique because with a diver, you know, I mean, the diver changed the water into rosé, yes? It's like a miracle. And uh, we are happy because after seven vintage, you know, we have been recognized many times as in the top 10 ro best rosé in the world. And uh, it's, a, it's a happy history, yeah. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You always so bring glad. us such beautiful so stories. And of course, you being the envy of my life. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to go with you. <laughs> all right, coming up next, Lifestyle Magazine's fashion director fills us in on all things Dolce Gabbana. Yes. Woo! With a little mix of Gloria yes. and Emilio Estefan, my 305. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. My next guest not only travels the world visiting fashion houses, finding out the latest from each designer, she has also walked during Haute Couture Week in Paris ooh, and appeared in Thursday styles of the New York Times wearing Dolce & Gabbana during New York Fashion Week. Oh, love that. She joins us to give us an inside look into the newest offerings from Dolce & Gabbana. I'm excited to welcome Lifestyles Magazine fashion director, Denisa Palsha. Welcome Thank back. Thank you, Olga. Great to be here. It's so great. But you look Marvelous. We're going to talk so much in Dolce <laughs> Gabbana, right? But first, I want to talk about their American luxury furniture debut. Not long ago, I mean, I always knew them as the luxury fashion house, but 
What am I missing here? So Dolce Gabbana have been launching trends since mid 80s, particularly fashion France, and that's why there's no surprise that there's a bit of a misconception. People see them as a fashion house, but they're actually one of the world's largest luxury lifestyle brands. Mm. So they have products ranging from fashion to uh, luxury eyewear, perfume, makeup, leather goods, furniture, Everything. decor. Uh, Domenico Dolce Stefano Gabbana literally flew in to open the door of their first and only American luxury Dolce Gabbana Casa furniture store. Uh, the furniture comes in full sets, so you can have a Dolce Gabbana bedroom, living room, dining room, but also for clients that just want to have a little bit of that aesthetics and a decor items, there is a wide range of small pieces so you don't have to go really big. Tell me why you think Dolce Gabbana picked Miami as their point of entry. So you know this is interesting you ask us. I didn't know that either until I interviewed the designers at the red carpet. So let's take a look at what they have to say as I've interviewed them. Let's do it. We are so happy. We present for the first time the Altamoda Miami. Thank you to Emilia Gloria. Inspire us a lot and we love to repeat uh, this aspect because it's a beautiful, a beautiful aspect. You know, Miami is special. It's uh, special for everyone. And uh, we are Italian, but we are, very, we are very close to the Miami mood. And they're all, you know, the Brazilian, Colombian, Mexican, Puerto Rico, you know, the mood is the same. And I'm a huge fan of Dolce & Gabbana. I've worn it on many an album cover. Somehow I fit into the samples of the runway. I don't know if now, but definitely when we did the covers, and I just think they are phenomenal. We're so thrilled to have them here and to do this spectacular party. You know, they're simple people, but they have a lot of uh, big ideas, and they lo you know what I thought? They love to celebrate being happy, the community. They want to be part of the community. They've been here for over 25 years. Oh my gosh, Gloria looked fantastic. Of course, she was wearing Dolce Gabbana. How was the party? Amazing. Ha, it was absolutely, you know, best of Dolce Gabbana, kind of a, a runway on an ocean drive and bringing that glamour back again, right, to Miami Beach. I'm glad you had a great time. Thank you so much for being here again. Thank Love you. you so much. You look gorgeous. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness, great having you. And coming up, we're gonna take a look at what $76 million can get you. $76 million, can you guess? little sweet pad I would say there you go we'll <laughs> see what it is 76 million dollars it's amazing stay right there we'll be right back My next guest was born and raised in Miami Beach. He has a background in construction and property management, which makes him the preeminent luxury realtor in South Florida, specifically Miami and Miami Beach. He joins us today to discuss his latest listing, and wait till you see it, at 5718 North Bay Road. I'm so thrilled to welcome Berkshire Hathaway Home Services EWM Realtor and Senior Vice President David Hunt Solomon. Welcome. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, and I really would like to take a look at this house one day if you don't want you don't mind just taking I can't afford it how much are we talking 76 million 76 million dollars well on that note why don't we just talk about it since I'm never even going to get close to that this is stunning so I'm going to start first about the amazing view outside of this house walk me through this yes. wow so the important thing about North Bay Road is that it rolls around on an S so oh. this particular view not many houses have it but you're direct downtown and another thing about being on North Bay Road is you're west facing. So daily sunsets, beautiful views, direct downtown. So it gets better as the day goes on. During the day, you get the beautiful shot. At night, it lights up. So it's really special. So it really has a very unique viewing platform, but from all areas, right? Yeah, so the viewing platform you're talking about is the dock. <sighs> so when this guy installed the dock, he made sure it was double size. So the idea is you're in Miami, indoor, outdoor living. You can go hang out there, put a dining table out there, but it's just a great thing with a great view. Now let's talk about the master bedroom, which is always the best place to be. Uh, talk to me just about the master bedroom and the balcony. Yeah, so first of all, views from all angles. You go out, you're laying in bed, downtown views. Can you imagine? Wow. I can imagine. Mm. Also from your bathroom even, we have uh, an opaque glass, but from the bathroom you even get this downtown view. And it's just one of those things where you get the water, you get the view, you get the skyline, all glass, uh, the shower and tub are together. 
And like I said, there's a button you press, opaque, so if you want to be a little exhibitionist, you want somebody to watch <laughs> you from the bedroom, you can. It's just a really nice bathroom. Now, my favorite part of the house is always the kitchen. I love to cook. I would love to have this kitchen. Look at this. Yeah, it's a gourmet chef's kitchen. It probably has the most refrigeration I've ever seen in a kitchen <laughs> because you have your standard sub-zero fridges, but then you also have all these under counters. My favorite feature, though, is the countertop. He actually installed the cooktop in the counter, which you don't normally see. Normally, there's like a range and it's right. ugly. This is in the stone, so it's really special the way he did it. He's very detailed, he's very different, very unique too, right? Absolutely, this is a custom home. This is not a spec home. It's not cutting corners, it's super sophisticated, and it's just one of those properties that when you walk in, you feel why it's 76 million. I was doing my homework and I saw here that every room in this modern house, it's like one floor plan and they all kind of connect. Right, so with a modern floor plan, it's super open. So when you walk in from the front door, you basically see view right away, but then it's just this big space where you have bar, dining, living, there's even a separate TV area and then your kitchen. So you kind of hang out in this room, you can be kind of flexible moving around and then when you wanna go outside, open the sliders and go right out. And when you're walking around the house, you go down to the base of the stairs and here we are going down and you see, voila, yeah, so first, an aquarium. First of all, it's a Guggenheim style stair, so it rounds and it's really quite amazing the way they do it. But yes, at the bottom of the stair, we have a fish tank, which is salt water, stingrays, coral, and it's really fun to watch. You just sit there and get mesmerized. Mesmerized with that, and then if this is not enough, a rooftop terrace. Yeah. Again, the views are amazing, but again, you, there you have it. You're just on top of the world. You're in heaven. No question. So the point is you get the view from all three levels. From your first floor, you get it. Your second floor, you get it. And then if you really want to go all the way, you go up to the roof, a little bit more private your own private terrace, you go out there and there's the view again. How many bedrooms does this house have? It's seven bedrooms, uh, but you know, flexible. If you need all seven, you can use them. If not, you can always interchange some of the rooms. There were more bedrooms, but he then created a media room. Tell me about that. Correct, so the owner only had a few kids. He has three kids, so he didn't need all seven. So he made one of the downstairs <laughs> rooms a media room. And then there's also an office, uh, which he turned in another bedroom into an office. So he has that space for himself. All right, so how many square feet is this house? Uh, 7,700 under AC. Feels a lot bigger because with the terraces and all the things, it's more like 10,000. But under AC, it's 7,700. To wrap it up, what I like really about your unique style is that it's very personal. You don't have a full staff, it's you and I think another partner, right? Yeah, so I have a, a, a great partner who's really become my right hand. Um, her name is Jacqueline Oliva from Chicago. She's been with me about four years and she's also a realtor with EWM. But yeah, the two of us are really just, you know, hitting this hard. We do all our own showings. She's really at the head of my marketing also. So yeah, it's just the two of us. So when you get us, you get us. Well, I hope you get that sale and the commission is gonna be a very nice one as well. Thank you so much, I <laughs> Thank you so it. much, good luck to you. And up next, we're gonna find out what's happening in real estate, so stay tuned for that. One topic that's been on everyone's mind since the start of last year is the increase in interest rates. More specifically, what does this mean for housing in South Florida? We'll hear with more on what's happening in the market and what we might see next is Ron Sheffield, president and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, EWM Realty. Welcome again. Hello, good morning. Thanks for being here. Yes. Okay, so I was reading here that interest rates are 3% higher than they were a year ago. So Ron, a few things I want to know. What does that mean for the buyer? What does that mean for the seller? And actually, what does that mean in terms of your sales? Well, when you have a 3% increase in the interest rate in a 12-month period of time, it certainly erodes some of our borrowing power. So our buyers today don't have quite as much ability to borrow like they had a year ago. So that's where we are today, which means that either you pay about a 50% higher monthly mortgage payment. Which is very difficult for a lot of people today. It certainly is. For any, any period, <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, or you have to borrow less money. And so it's pretty much that simple. So instead of being able to borrow a million dollars, for instance, uh, now you can only borrow $667,000. 
And what about sales for you then? Well, as you look back at the graphs, which you can see on the screen here, you'll see that when the interest rates started increasing a year ago, last spring, spring of 22, is when we started seeing the increases in rates from 3% to 4%, then 5%, 6%, and even as high as 7% in November. Now we're back to about 6.5%. But during that last 12 months, we saw the, the sales begin to, to decrease. Uh, as the interest rates increased. What does that mean in terms of supply? What does it look like today? Well, supply today uh, had, had grown uh, during this period when sales were dropping. Supply started growing because we weren't selling as many homes. Uh, the inventory got back up to about six months of supply. Now, we like to keep about six to nine months of supply, and now because we have been selling more these last three months, January, February, and March, again, you'll see on the screen where our sales, our, our pending sales are up considerably uh, from last December. So in terms of the future, what do you think um, lies ahead? Because for a lot of people, it's been a little bit of a Debbie Downer. Well, it has been. But what we've seen now is that people are coming back into the market because they're feeling more confident. You know, our Federal Reserve has been uh, having their attention drawn to inflation. And so uh, we're getting some good reports even this week. You know, inflation rate has dropped a little bit more. But all of America has helped to do that because we put some, some guidelines in place now to, to curb that growth of inflation. And... Um, so what that means is that people today uh, are feeling more confident that the rates have dropped from 7% in November down to about 6.5% today. So they're feeling like, okay, well, maybe we were kind of leveling out here, so this is a time for me to jump in. So what would you say to anyone out there that's been on hold, if you will, a first-time buyer that's <laughs> thinking, oh, maybe not yet, I don't want to take the dive, your response? Well, get in the game. Get in the game. <laughs> it's right. always important, especially with real estate. Well, absolutely. You know, if you're not in the game, you're not, you're not going to benefit when the markets go up. And, of course, as we look back uh, uh, historically over the last you know 20 years 30 years 40 years 50 years you know uh, it's a pretty safe bet uh, to invest in real estate you know it's not something that changes daily or hourly or monthly uh, but certainly it's something that over time has proven to be a wise investment so we just tell everybody get in the game uh, buy as much as you can buy comfortably uh, but don't overextend yourself uh, and of course we have many opportunities now for financing 20% uh, has kind of always been the standard down payment but we have a lot of loans today that are as low as 5% down great information thank okay. you sir thank you so always much. a pleasure to okay. have you thank you and of course coming up we're gonna meet an international fashion model who promotes being healthy from the inside out we'll be right back Welcome back to Lifestyles Plus. My next guest has been modeling since the age of 17. Early on in her career, she understood that it was important to create and maintain habits for optimal well-being. Wanting to share all she has learned, she created a wellness hub for women called The Collective Ritual. I'm so happy to have here today Chelsea May. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having Thanks me. Thanks for being here. Thank so you. I have a lot of history on you. I want to start with the fact that your mom, I love this, your mom said, nope, you're not going to sign with an agency until after 17. What a great mom. I know. <laughs> so she wanted, so I had a bunch of agencies scout me during high school and she really wanted me to finish with high school before I really dove into the modeling world. So at 17 she took me to Toronto. We met with a few agencies and we went with the one of course that really like prioritized my school and take that as like my first priority. And then I went to college and university in Toronto, and then I started modeling. That's fantastic. Yeah. Good for mom. Thank goodness she did I that know. for you. And then I was reading here, because I know the mind and body and spirit has always been an important journey for you. Tell me why. So in modeling, I think it's such a career in the exterior. It focuses on aesthetic and the exterior, and mindset is just so powerful when it comes to modeling. So that's when I dove into meditation and journaling and yoga and things to really strengthen the mind in such like a cutthroat industry. Did you believe that all of that helped you portray even a more beautiful self? I think so, for sure. Yeah, I think that confidence comes from within, so I think that was a really good a really good thing for me to practice was mindset, mind over matter always. And then you embarked in even more. Uh, listen to this, you became a holistic health coach, you became gut health certified, I want you to explain what that means to mm -hmm. me please, and a meditative breath work teacher. So tell me what that all means and why that was important to you. Yeah, so in 2018, I got certified at the Institute of Integrative Nutrition out of New York. So I became um, a health coach, essentially. And then they have these continued education certifications you can do in gut health, um, women's hormones. And then I dove in to become a breathwork teacher as well. And all of this kind of like transpired into what the collective ritual is today. 
and now you've created something where you want women to learn from you and not only about health well-being confidence so much more it's called the collective ritual tell me yeah. what this is I'm curious yeah so it's an online membership and community for women to ultimately feel like their best self so during the pandemic in 2020 um, in a time that there was no schedule there was no routine I kind of made a routine for myself every day when I would wake up it would be meditate go for a walk cook a new recipe and I just started creating this lifestyle for myself in a uncertain time and I just found so much power in it I saw my life just truly take a 180 and that's when the collective virtual idea was born I was like there's no one-stop shop for this for women you know there's meditation apps and then there's workout apps and then there's recipe blogs but what about just like one thing together where you could feel like you're a part of just this community of wellness support I, one another I feel like you're just not a pretty face and you want people to know oh. that you're empowering women to Thank know you. that they can be confident that they can do more right yeah you're always one decision away from a, like the life you want I think and it's all about mindset so strengthening the mind with rituals and routines you can really become the woman you want to become. What a career you've had. You're still so young. You have so much ahead of you. Any other aspirations, goals that you may have? Are you going to continue to model on top of everything else you're doing? Yeah, for I mean, I'll model as long as I can. I've been doing it now for 13 years, wow. but um, you know, health and wellness is my passion, so I do hope that these take me on a new journey and I'll always model, I think, but until Sarah Matina and takes me somewhere else. Final thoughts. Positive affirmations are super powerful. So if you can wake up, tell yourself how much you love yourself every single day, then love trumps all. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you so much. Good luck thank to you. you so much. Appreciate it. And of course, congratulations to her and your future endeavors. And we thank you for joining Lifestyles Plus. It's been a great show and we hope to see you next time. You take care.